so like yesterday we have discussed all the terminology and introduction of ansible today we will go for installing ansible we will discuss how to install ansible from where to install ansible right how do we set up the lab all these things we are going to see this right so the basic prerequisites to set up a lab here is first thing okay <clears throat> So <clears throat> you need to have a two virtual machines and make sure that you have enough resources on your machine. You should have minimum 8 GB, 12 GB or 16 GB RAM. Make sure that if you don't have, if you have a 4 GB or if you have a 6 GB, that doesn't work. Still, we can manage with only one machine, not two machines, <clears throat> right? So the first machine here, we call it as a control node here. Okay, and this is something called managed node, right? So when I just talk about a control node, in order to configure a control node, what we need, the prerequisites here. So please install with the latest version of Red Hat Linux. So what I recommend is, I'll recommend you to install RHEL 8.5. Okay, don't install 9, because 9 is a beta version, you know that. 9 is a beta version <clears throat> so you need to install only 8.5 if you want to test it out you can install 9 also it's up to you right if you want to see like what features you have in 9 you can go with 9 there is no restrictions okay so 8.5 need to be installed then after installing 8.5 right on the control node so install uh, rhel 8.5 Okay, uh, on control node and manage node, right? This is very important. Then after installation is done, so do one thing. The first thing here is update etc host file, right? So what you will do, you need to update etc host file on the control node. We are talking all the configuration on control node only, not manage node. So you need to update etc host file. Then after updating the etc host file, then second, what we need to do, configure yam repository, right? Then after configuring yam repository, make sure that then add EPL repo to the control node, right? I'll try to show you how to be add a EPL repository. So you might be having a doubt when we configure a local, rep I mean, when we configure a repository for our Red Hat 8, then what is the use of creating EPL repo? Very simple, you know, in order to install Ansible, Ansible doesn't come with, Ansible software doesn't come with your default operating system media, right? So you might be having a doubt if I'm not able to get an Ansible package from default operating system media, then from where I need to download. Very simple here. Yeah? Okay, first thing, I'll just try to put a create Red Hat subscription and download from there, download from the Red Hat site that is called RHN site, all right? Otherwise do one thing. I told you, right, you need to create a EPL repository. Do one thing, try to configure an EPL repository. Add a rep EPL repository, don't forget that. You need to add a EPL repository. So after adding a EPL repository, then you need to install yam install ansible you need to do so when you do a yam install ansible instead i mean it will try to install the package from this particular repository from this epl repository or if the rhn network is there on your on your machine then it will try to install from here <clears throat> is this clear i will also show you how to add a rhn uh, account and how do we subscribe your account using a command line? We will see all these things. Nothing to worry. Then after installing Ansible, like uh, when you're installing Ansible like this, right? With 
python dependencies it will install python latest version it will install python 3.6 is a dependencies it is going to install it now good the ansible got installed here well and fine right so then once the ansible is installed this is what exactly the control node configuration is very simple right but when you install ansible on a control node that is not over right we need to make a communication between control node and managed node right if you want to make a communication between control node and managed node what you need to do right so let's go into the managed node now we will i'll try to show you what configurations need to be done on the managed node on the managed node as we install red hat enterprise linux after installing red hat enterprise linux create here yum repository configure yum repo after configuring yum repository then uh, yum install python we need to install python 36 after installing a python then what you will do right then after installing a python do one thing try to create one user create a user okay so what i'll do user add i'll try to create a user with the name called ansible then we will try to set the password to the ansible user right after setting a password what you do is very simple add ansible user add ansible user to sudo file right so how do we add visudo sudo and the entry should be like this ansible i'll try to put all is equals to all then you need to go with no password colon space all this is what you need to put so after you update this entry then save it then switch to the ansible user after switching to the ansible user try to do sudo hyphen l and see whether you have all the uh, privileges or not right is this clear then after doing this, what we will do is once you complete this configuration, now it is done. The configuration is done on the managed node. Now again, come back to the control node here. Now what we need to do on the control node, remember one thing, we need to again create a user here also. Create a user. So what is the username? User add Ansible, then set the password for Ansible user and here also add to the sudo. Okay, add Ansible user to, you. I mean, using vi sudo, right? So the entries will be same. I'll do one thing. I'll try to copy this lines and paste it there. I'll try to paste it here. So once you do this, then what you need to do is then log into the user account su hyphen ansible then what you do you try to you know create i mean generate one ssh key so ssh hyphen key gen you just try to run and try to generate the key after generating the key ssh hyphen copy hyphen id you need to use this command to copy the public key to the Managed node. Copy the public key to manage node. This is what we need to do. This is the entire configuration here. This is what we need to do. So let's get into the machine here. So I have already installed a machine here. You can see the installation has been successfully done. And I am just trying to reboot this machine. Can you observe this? So one minute, let me reboot manually. Yeah, it has got rebooted. Uh, hey, Ramgaru, uh, I have a question. Tell me, tell me, tell me. 
Yeah. Actually, I'm using Mac clean. Uh, it's still hard to install VMware on Mac. Mm -hmm. You should install VMware Fusion on it. Yeah, install... that's a similar question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I installed the VMware Fusion uh, uh -huh. with the demo, demo license, but mm -hmm. looks like uh, uh, the process is little different, right, compared to Windows. Yes, like, it uh, is. Yes. Setting up the yeah. VM. Yes, it is different. You're right. It is a little bit different. Um, then you have a built-in uh, hypervisor on the Mac, I think. Why don't you use that? Hypervisor. Yes, Mac uh, has. Actually, You're not aware of it. No, actually. Okay, I need to check, and I have to give you some information. Okay, wait one minute. Uh, so there, I can create a server. Yes, yes, I, mean, I, can, you split can. Into, I can split it into a couple of uh, servers. Yes, yes, you okay. can, you can. Uh, one minute, Mac. BUIL the built in hypervisor. See, there is a built in hypervisor on Mac. The best way is to Mac. Hypervisor. So, I think this is what hypervisor is a commonly what's efficient monitoring, like a virtual operating platform. So, see, this is what I think a parallel desktop. Something. Uh, that you... is a paid, paid software. It's a paid software on Mac. Huh? Yeah. Sure. Uh, what is this? VMware Cross... is like... Crossover Mac. Uh, Crossover. These are all like paid ones. This is all paid ones. Bootcamp. Yeah, right. we have to buy on Mac. Free hypervisor. I need to say free. Actually, VMware Fusion is working fine. Mm -hmm. The only problem is uh, you need uh, a license like, for, for example. No, no, not not only license. License we can manage, like we can generate another demo license. But uh, the image which we used to uh, install or boot up, right? Like the uh, rel server stand up. Mm -hmm. Although those are not compatible with the uh, the map which I'm using. Really? Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's M1, M1 series, like a new, mm -hmm. uh, it's not Intel, ARM based. What about Intel? Wait, we will see that. Let me tell you. Uh, mm -hmm. Why don't you try Oracle Virtual Box? Uh, there is some issue with that uh, Mac. <laughs> no issue. Oh, we have some permissions issue, Ramgarh. So, uh -huh. uh, but by when you are installing, like you need to give some, you know, uh, some permissions and passwords. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, why don't you? are a little bit very hectic sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will see the solutions for it. That's not a problem. So, yep. I have installed, uh, you know, control node, and control node is ready. And uh, let me also install the managed node. So, <clears throat> I'll try to install even this machine too, because we have to configure the manage node also. That's the reason. I'll quickly get, just try to install it. Then we'll go with the configuration till that. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat>
time. So I'll just go with English. Just click on continue. Then try to set the date and time. Then I'm going with minimal installation. Just observe this. And uh, so you, do, you also do the same thing. You need to install with minimal because the resources consumption will be very low when you go with the minimal installation. Then after that, we will click on the network. I'll just try to, okay, I need to set the IP address here. So what I'll do, uh, I'll try to give a static IP here instead of manual IP. So this is the way. So 192.192.168.1.1. Dot twenty seven dot two not two. I'm just trying to provide so one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot twenty seven dot two will be the gateway. So, whatever the DNS we have that we need to give it up here, then just click on save and give the name here as yum node one dot lab dot com. I'm just trying to give it just I gave it just click on done. And click on root password here, red hat, red hat, sorry, red hat. I'll just click on done. Then I'll try to create a user STU DNT student, STU DNT student, STU DNT student. I'll just try to save it. Then the begin the installation, let the installation go on. It will just take five to six minutes to get it installed. Now what I'll do is I'll try to log on to my control node here as a root and let me know what is IP address of this particular machine, right? It is 201, you can observe this. So what I'll do, I'll try to connect this machine using a party. Uh, let's do one thing. Okay, here it is. I need to change the name. I'll just try to save this name and I'll just try to go with. So you can see that I am going to log into the machine as a root. Then uh, first of all, I just want to show you the which release, you know, Red Hat release 8.5 it is. And I'll just try to run IPA as a command. And you need to see if we have an interface with the name called ENS 160, and this is IP address for it. And remember, this is a static IP. So you need to see here, if it is not a st static, if it is dynamic, it shows dynamic here, but we don't see any dynamic here. Then the first thing we need to do is as we need to update ETC host file, let's do one thing. We will try to update ETC host file with the host name and IP address. So I'll just try to open VI ETC HOSTS host file. And as we open this host file here and uh, try to put the IP address of this machine. So 192.168.27.201 um, you know, and then try to put the machine name here. So once you put this information, then try to save it, right? You need to update the control node information also, but not right now. Once it gets installed, then we later you need to update. So once you update this, now we need to configure a M repository. See, basically, as you all know that M repository can be configured in two ways. Okay, one is like I'll just try to tell you here. M repository, M repository can be configured in two ways. Okay, one is, you know, um, local local repo. Okay, another one is network repo using HTTP service. So what I recommend is local repo is very simple. Why? Because, you know, uh, we will try to mount the DVD like this slash dev slash SR zero slash MNT. And based on this MNT, we will try to configure a local repo, right? 
network repo what happens you know you can configure network repo and based on the man control node and we can share this repository to the managed node right so what i recommend is it is better to go with network repo only because every time when you are performing some task on a managed node every time locally you need to mount this dvd rom as you know that when you reboot the machine the dvd rom gets unmounted right so that's the reason what we need to do we need to configure a network repo i'll try to give you a detailed information about how do we configure network repo this is one time configuration maybe today we are spending more time to configure a setup okay maybe totally one and a half hour but still this is a one time setup once you configure this this 40 days you are not going to make any changes to your setup right so this is what exactly and this setup is equal to your real time setup even in real time also same thing we will do but in real time setup what happens you know most of the times we see that it is connected to rhn network right so control node is connected to the rhn network most of the time what we i see so whatever the packages and softwares we need that it has to be downloaded from the rhn network i'll also show you how to register that also i'll give you all the detail information so what i want to do is uh, before i i want to configure a network repository but before we configure a network repository you need to configure a local repository right so first of all df hyphen h capital t so you can see that there is no dvd rom got mounted okay so let us mount slash dev slash sr0 slash mnt but it is saying that media not found for this what you need to do is very simple go to the uh, machine or machine settings you need to just say click on connect the dvd then immediately it comes up so now you try to mount it yes it got mounted you need to run df hyphen h capital t you can see that the dvd rom has been mounted with this file system so once it got mounted what we will do is very simple we will try to <clears throat> configure first local repository so how do we configure local repository so very simple etc m dot repos dot d local dot repo this is of what the name of the local repository file name then i'll just try to define so i'll just try to put base os then and as you know that the structure of the dvd right let me show you that also so i'll just try to take you into the mnt to show you the structure of your dvd so the iso image comes with app stream as well as base os base os is nothing but the core operating system and app stream is nothing but extra packages for this system administration right so what i'll do i'll just come out of it and i'll just try to again configure the repository here so i'll just try to say base os then the name is equals to so base os rpm repo okay then base url url is nothing but the path of your repository so slash mnt slash base os then enable is equals to one right so then then we have to configure same thing for the app stream also app stream then the name is equals to you know app stream rpms repo okay then the base url is equals to file colon slash 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 mnt slash app stream then remember this is purely a case sensitive you need to follow as it is the naming convention right don't make any changes and don't uh you know it will be a problem enable is equals to one you right then after this you just try to close this and after closing this try to run yum repo list here then we should able to list the repository we'll just check see we are able to list the repository you can put hyphen v to list it verbose detailly <laughs> so once the repository has been listed now what you need to do in order to install the packages you need to do one thing rpm hyphen hyphen import followed by slash mnt followed by rpm so you need to import the key if you don't import the key uh, it doesn't allow you to install the packages you know what is this key key is nothing but it is not a license it is just to verifying the key 
that's it to install a package and you are trying to import the key one time not every time when you install a package you are going to import a key only one time right then after this what i'll do is very simple i'll just try to install the packages here okay so i'll just try to say yum install http right i'll just try to press and enter the http package is going to get installed because if you want to configure a network repository we have you know three different services one is http nfs and vsftpd or ftpd but it is recommended to do httpd right i'll just try to install the package here after installing the package and once you install the package the http package is there and you need to enable the service <clears throat> you know how to enable system ctl enable httpd and start it enable and start the service after you enable and start the service then just try to check the status status it is running once you check the status now what you will do is very simple you need to do one thing ls hyphen ld where ww html you know what is the importance about this directory this is called you know document root for http what is mean by document root it is this is a directory where you are going to put all the content that you want to share using http so what i'll do is i'll just try to go into var www html and i'll try to create a directory with the name called rhel85 right then after you create it now what you'll do is you'll come out of it you need to copy the entire content of your dvd entire content what what is the total content of the dvd 11 gb you need to copy this entire 11 gb and where you are going to copy this where ww html and where where is a part of which file system right now where is a part of root file system then you need to cross check whether you have enough disk space or not if you don't have enough disk space, it doesn't allow you to copy. So you do one thing, 20 GB is a disk space that is required. Okay, if you don't want to take any risk, you can create a 40 GB, right? So this is the way copy hyphen ARP. So why you are using ARP? A stands for all, all R stands for recursively, P stands for with permissions and ownerships it should copy. So this is what, then we will just try to say, uh, MNT star, and then we want to copy somewhere in where ww html in rhel 8.5, and then we need to put an ampersand here. So, you know what is the use of ampersand here? It is going to be a backend process. I'll just try to press and enter here. Then the copy process is going on. How do we monitor this? DF hyphen H, you know, where ww html and rhel 8. So around 396 MB of uh, uh, data is being copied there. You can see the increment number. That means the copy process is in progress. Now what we will do is we will try to configure a network repo, right? So how do we configure network repo? I'll just try to open vietcm.repos.d, right? And I'll just try to put C node, okay um http dot repo <clears throat> you can put underscore that's not a problem c node underscore http repo like this we can put i'll just try to open it so once we open this you need to configure http repo right so i'll just go to the installation so base os http okay repo so then uh, we will just try to define the name. So base OS, HTTP, RPMs, repo. Then you can put any name here. There is no restriction. Then base URL is equals to HTTP <clears throat> colon slash slash. What is IP address of this machine? 192.168. 27.201 then slash rhel85 
then you might ask me a doubt like why you are not defining where ww html that is a default path of the http so http service by default looks into that location nothing to worry it has been updated in a configuration file of http that's the reason then we need to put something called base os okay then after this enable is equals to one uh, sorry it should be one not two then after this gpg check is equals to one and gpg key is equals to you need to define the path http colon slash slash 192.168.27.201 slash uh, rhel 8.5 and you need to define the key name so what will be the key name here let me show you uh, yeah this is a key that you need to copy the name only i'm just trying to copy this is what exactly then in the same way we need to configure app stream also so app stream http repo then name is equals to app stream http rpms repo <clears throat> rest of the thing as it is i'll copy and any changes i'll look it here app stream rest of all is same can just see this <clears throat> okay now what i'll do i'll just try to save this configuration once the configuration is same yum repo list i need to run so but before we run this we need to see whether the copy is successfully done or not still it is 4.3 gb only it is copied let the copy happens we need to wait till it happens <clears throat> maybe sometimes it might takes more time so you need to just report this So then, so I just try to change. This is mandatory because if you don't change the boot order, it will be a problem. Let the machine get booted. Now let again try to check this 5.7 GB. We need to wait for another two, three minutes. Because if it doesn't copy, you will not be able to access it. <clears throat> <clears throat> 11 gb is a very big image you know and you know like how do we if you don't have a red hat software then you need to download it from this site access.redhat.com you need to go don't forget that so access.redhat.com
from here you need to create a subscription even i to showed you yesterday the subscription is very important you know access.redhat.com you need to click on this red hat enterprise linux then if you have an account put the username and password if you don't have click on register for account and go with the personal account put all these credentials because you are going to get a 60 days account a trial subscription then this will be useful for your tower also no need to worry so i'll recommend you to create and also show you how to add a red hat subscription to the machine also don't worry now after completing this repository i'll also show you that also okay do, do we need credit card to reserve nothing no credit card nothing if you have oh, just okay. email address gmail or yahoo any email address you can use and you can register with red hat okay <clears throat> okay so they don't ask any credit card details or nothing so once this local repository is done then we will try to configure epl repository then i will also show you because already i am having an account with red hat i will try to show you how do we um register that okay so let's do one thing i'll try to go back and i'll just try to put my credentials so i have a password i'm trying to log into my account hmm. <clears throat> this account is nothing but red hat satellite server remember that you need to click here and this is my user id ab chander is my user id and password whatever the password i'm having it so this is all about i'll try to click on subscription here just see it shows you the subscriptions <clears throat> i have a two active subscriptions recently 11 subscriptions got expired do you see this if you want to view that what are that 11 subscriptions it's going to give you all this details here can you see okay can you show me like uh, how you i mean i was i was here at the at this particular screen but i cannot uh, 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 see the new subscription uh, very simple here One minute, please. Yeah, take your time. Yeah, are you able to see my screen? Yes. You need to. You are go, at. Uh, you no. You need to go to this access dot redhat dot com. you need to go okay. to access dot redhat dot com you need to go as you go here you need to just click on login you need to click on okay. login here as you click on the login it comes here if you don't if you have an account put your email address and password if you don't have an account you need to click on register for a redhat account so mm -hmm. i'll just yeah. i mean i logged in yeah i'm having it So at the rate gmail dot com, I'm just trying to log in. So after logging, you need to put the password. Okay, as I put a password here, then I'll get into this. Right now, here you need to click on the product. You need to click on this Red Hat Enterprise Linux because we want to download that. If you want to download any other thing, you can download that. So then you need to click on Red Hat version eight dot five. Then it starts downloading. or it might switch to some other site then here you can see this 10.2 gb can you see this yeah you need to just click on download now hmm this is what you need to do <clears throat> this is what exactly and uh, okay let's see that i don't know whether the copy is done a uh, copy is successfully done here you can see 11 gb is successfully copied so once it is copied let me check whether yeah the repository is working or not yum repo list we need to see that repository is working properly 
it has to list the packages yes it is working can you see this now we don't need a local repository what i'll do i'll try to remove the local repository so m repo list hyphen v you can run to see the packages within that repositories right so after doing this i'll try to remove the local repository right so how do we remove the local repository go to etc m dot repos dot d location and we have a local repository local repo i'll try to put it somewhere into the temp so right now i don't have a local repository what all the things i am having is i have only the network repository that i have configured through http through http can you see this right. now what i will do i will try to configure epl repository nitro you will ask me why you are configuring epl repository m list ansible when i say uh, there is no packet match i mean package is not matching with that name because we don't have a package so what we need to do we need to configure an epl repository here so in order to configure epl repository you need to get into a browser and you need to click on go to the google and just try to say epl repo for red hat 8 then you need to click on this fedora project don't go to other sites okay go to the fedora project and try to uh, download this link use this link you see i'm going with red hat 8 you can observe and i'm going with this is what exactly right i'll just try to take this link here and put it onto my machine right i'll just try to press and enter and then it will try to install that package epl release package then after installing this package the epl repository will be added to your machine so you might have a doubt how i will come to know that epl repo you just try to run yum repo list it shows you that the epl repository is added can you see this now i'll just try to show you yum i mean list ansible it will show you the package from the epl repository just observe okay so you can see this ansible package is available package but it is there in which repository it is there inside the epl repository can you see this now i'll also show you how to add a red hat subscription also how do we add red hat subscription we have something called subscription manager okay and hyphen hyphen help i'll just try to put it is going to give you all the options you need to use only this register option when you are using this red hat subscription here i'll just try to press and enter it immediately asked me the username so username i need to get it from my account because it is there here i'll just try to ab chander is my username a b c h a n d a chander and the password i'm going to put the password here once i you put a username and password the subscription will be added to this machine just see it take it might take some time and make sure that your control node your control node has a public network that means gateway and dns need to be added okay you remember that at the time of installation only we have added gateway and dns okay you can see the system registration with id and the register system name is control node lab dot com this is what we do in real time okay so after this what i'll do is i'll just try to go with this command so maybe i'll also share sub subscription manager red hat subscription there is a document i'll also share this document to you i need to run this particular command to see available subscriptions here okay i'll just try to press and enter so when you just try to press and enter it is going to give you all the red hat subscription that we are having that so can you see this this is a subscription that i'm having hit you can just see i have run this particular command what is the command i have run i have run this command this is all subscriptions available subscriptions here and this subscription is i am having this subscription for this is a self support subscription and it is unlimited 
and the subscription e is uh, for one year subscription i think can you see this i have registered somewhere in 2021 december 14 and this is available up to 2022 because this is and developer subscription remember so how do you know that it is a developer subscription here it is clearly saying that self support with the developer subscription my personal subscription has been over 60 days is over okay this is my developer subscription which is used i'm using it for tower okay so this is what even you see how many node it is going to support available for 16 node are you able to see this so this is all about okay now i'll just try to run yum repo list here okay then we have to see the repositories so basically right now the personal subscription is over right it doesn't allow you to get any repositories from the rha network right but this is the way how it is going to work okay even i'll just try to show you so this is what exactly and these are the commands that we are going to use in order to sync the repository from Red Hat side to your local machine. You're getting my point? These are the things. So everything is fine. I hope you understood how to add, how to create a repository, how to add a repositories. Now shall we install Ansible? So let us go with the Ansible. So yum install Ansible. So I'll just try to press and enter. The Ansible is going to get installed here. See, whenever I'm trying to install Ansible, it is going to install with all the dependencies. You can see all the dependencies are Python only. You're able to see this. This is very important thing that you need to understand. So I'll just try to put yes. Yes is nothing but to install the package. Yeah, the installation is going on. I'll just try to say yes. See, the package is getting installed from where? Fedora EPL. You need to just say yes. It is going to install the key. So as the package is installed here, you know, what I'll do is very simple. After the package is installed, you now what we will do is very simple. Now I'll just try to say Ansible hyphen hyphen version, just to know the version here. It is installed with 2.9.27. This is Ansible configuration file. And this is a location where it has a modules. And this is a binaries that is called command. And by default, it has taken this are all the dependencies that is being used in order to install Python. Right, this is all about, like we have did a control node configuration. Now let us go with the manage node also. So the manage node, I'll do one thing. Uh, I'll just try to, load this it will be one not two i mean two not two and uh, i need to change the name yes much and just click on save i'll just try to connect accept this is my manage node i'm going to connect to the manage node in the same way like using a root then uh, what i need to do is first thing is we need to configure a repository but before we configure we need to update the host file right vi etc host uh, before we add it i'll just try to say host name and i'll just try to say ip address the ip address is this is ip address this is a host name so let me take this vi etc host host then come down and put the information so I'll just try to put 192, 168, 27.202. 2. 
and I need to update the control node information 192, 168, and uh, 27. Um, 201, right? So, what will be the host name? COINT control node dot lab dot com. This is a host name. Just try to save this information. Then, after saving this information, do one thing. Okay, so after updating this information here, what we need to do, then we will try to um, configure the M repository, right? So how do we add M repository? You do one thing, copy, you know, we have SCP, right? You know, go to the control node and using SCP, SCP hyphen R, etc m dot repos dot d uh, the repository file what is a file name c node then i'll copy this to root at the rate 192 168 27 dot two not two colon i mean i mean slash so we need to put slash etc m dot repos dot d you need to put it here oh it is ask it is having some problem so what could be the problem here colon 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 right yes you need to say yes then put the password then the copy has successfully happened okay as a successfully happened just go to the etc m dot repos dot d here then you will see this, then try to run yum repo list. Will this repository will work? It doesn't work. So you'll, yeah, it is listing, but you cannot install it. You might ask a question why, right? Let me install yum, install py, py, thon python 36. It should 100% give you an error. Why it is giving this error as the repository is added, as we are able to list the repository, but it is not allowing you to install the package. The problem here is firewall D, firewall hyphen CMD hyphen hyphen list hyphen all. You should see that HTTP service is not added here. That's the reason it doesn't allow. So how do we add it? Firewall hyphen CMD hyphen hyphen permanent I hyphen hyphen add hyphen service is equals to HTTP, HTTP. Then firewall hyphen CMD hyphen hyphen reload. Right, then go back. Now you try to install the Python packages. Now you see it is going to hit the server and it will try to install the package. Can you see that? You need to just say yes here, yeah, the installation goes on. Installation goes on. So this is what exactly. Right, after installing the Python here, then we need to do one more thing here is, as a repository added. Okay, we need to create a user, right? So user add, Ansible, and PASSWD password. I'll try to put the password. Then vi sudo, you need to add this user to the sudo. Don't forget that. Then come down here, somewhere here at the root. So copy yyp, remove this root, and try to put Ansible user. And here at the end, we need to put no passwd colon. This is what you need to do. Then try to save this. Once you save this, what we will do, switch to the Ansible user, then try to run sudo hyphen L, sudo hyphen L. You should see this privileges. 
right then finally the manage node is done the configuration is done we have gone through this entire configuration everything is working now we need to go to the control node and we need to do the necessary configuration so what we need to do user add ansible user you might ask me if not ansible user can i create any other user yes you can create it's up to you okay pssd ansible instead of this local user you can also use network user also it might be ldap user kerberos user ad user yes we can use okay vi sudo then try to add that user just come down here go yyp then try to remove ansible then no pssd just try to save this then after saving this <clears throat> switch to the ansible user sudo hyphen yeah. then after this ssh hyphen key gen just try to generate the customized keys right right now when you run ssh hyphen key gen by default it generates rsa you will say that i don't want to go with rsa i want to go with something ecdsa hyphen t E C D S A. Yes, it will try to. I mean, it will try to generate it. Right, where it is going to generate in the home directory ls hyphen a. There will be an. Okay, one minute. Let me run again. So I'll try to go into dot ssh directory. You will see there are two keys. RSA and ECDSA. Then it based on your requirement, you copy whatever the public key you wanted. You'll say that it is recommended to copy ECDSA because less encryption, faster communication. That's the reason. So SSH hyphen copy hyphen ID hyphen I ID underscore ECDSA dot pub to the remote machine. What is the remote machine root? Not root actually. You need to go with Ansible user only. So no need to define the username. I'll tell you what's the reason. Uh, but before we copy this key, let me update one thing. Uh, Sud was sudo vi etc. Post file you need to update regarding the manage node information. One ninety to one sixty eight. Twenty seven to not two. Uh, Sorry, do not do then m node one dot lab dot com. This is what exactly just try to save this information. Then you need to copy ssh hyphen copy hyphen id hyphen i e c d s. I mean, hyphen e c not id underscore rsa e c d s a dot pop to which mission. To m node one dot lab dot com. Okay. Try to press and enter. That's it, right? Then you need to say yes. Then put the password. The key has been copied. Try to do SSH to m node one dot lab dot com. It should log into the m node. I mean, manage node without any password. Can you see that? This is what exactly happens. Okay, so the entire control node and managed configurations are successfully done. And whatever the steps we have followed for a managed node, okay, which is a managed node is Linux, right? The same thing you can configure for Ubuntu or CentOS or any other flavors of Linux and Unix. Right, there is no change in the steps. Clear? Are any doubts here? Now you might be asking me doubt. Okay, fine, boss. You have configured everything. Let me know whether it is working or not. Okay. So what you need to do is, I just want to test it up whether I am able to run an ad hoc command to run some command or to get some information. So what I have to do. 
So as you know that as the Ansible is already installed, Ansible hyphen hyphen version. And as we see that the default configuration file is here. So let me take you into this location, CD etc Ansible. As you run LS, you will see that there is one file with the name called ansible.cfg file is the configuration file here. And this configuration file will define the entire behavior of your Ansible. So I'll just go with less Ansible. I'll just try to open. So basically in this ansible.cfg file, there are many sections like default. We have a section called default. We have a section called privilege escalation. We have other sections also. So what we will do is uh, basically this all the sections that will be there. And this is only going to control the entire behavior of your Ansible, right? So as you know that this is a configuration file, then you might be asking what is host here. Host is a file which is called inventory. This is a default inventory. Host is a default inventory, remember? Host is a default inventory that comes with Ansible installation. Are you able to see this? So this is a default Ansible host file and it should live somewhere here. And there are some param, you know, some rules given here. What is this? So the comment begins within the line. Okay, hash, you know what is the importance about hash? Blank lines are ignored here. Group of hosts are delimiter by what? Square braces. And you can enter host name or IP address. The host name and IP address can be a member of multiple group. This is what the rules that you need to follow. Even same thing we will discuss when we start going with the inventory, right? And you see ungrouped host. This is called ungrouped host. Actually, right now, everything is commented here. Okay. And this is called grouped host. This is something called range. Okay, let's do one thing. I'll just try to edit it manually, VI. I'll try to put something called sudo. I'll try to put EM node. Oh, sorry. So EM node. M node one dot lab dot com or else I'll put the IP address one ninety two one sixty eight twenty seven dot two not anything is okay. Just save it. Now you want to verify this. I'll try to run a hadoc command. I'll try to run a hadoc command just to give you some knowledge. Where saying that from control node to manage node, all are good. All, all the configuration is good. So what I'll do hadoc command. So which Ansible is a hadoc command here? So I'll just try to use Ansible. And what is a node name? M node one dot lab dot com hyphen M command hyphen A. So what is a command that you want to run? I just want to run something called host name CTL command. Just try to press an enter. You should be able to see it has connected the remote machine and it has executed the module call command. And it has run this command and it has given you the output. Can you see this? Right now you will say that I want to see the uptime of the machine. Yes, you can. See, since how long your machine is running? 29 minutes. I'll just try to run uptime here. This machine is running from 53 machine and the command is node is running from the 29 minutes. There are totally two users logged into the machine, the average load on the CPU, and you can see this. So if the hadoc commands works perfectly, that means the entire setup has been configured properly. So this is how exactly it is going to work. So what we did, we have configured a control node. We have seen how to install. This is the way you can see the steps to register the Dash subscription. You have this on your documentation. I'll share you this manage node. Also, we have installed Python 3.6, you remember. And if it is for Windows, basically there is a separate documentation for Windows. You can just click on this link. Click on this link. 
So you need to set up this Vinaram. Can you see this Vinaram? There are so many scripts that is there here. You need to separately configure Vinaram. That I'll try to show you later. And if you're configuring Vinaram, make sure that you have a .NET Framework latest version. If it is not there, Windows automatically updates. If you don't have a automatic update, you need to download manually and you need to install it. Right. Then manage device, network devices. So even, even using Ansible control node, you can manage the network devices. There is a separate course for managing network devices. DO 457 is a, a special course for network device automation, right? There also, maybe you will have some module different. The basics is all same, right? Whatever, there are some important links that we have where you can get more information about whatever we have discussed till now. You might be knowing about top support policies you want to know. You can just know it from using this link. So this is what a top support policies for Ansible support. Ansible automation platform too. So you can see the certification program automation legacy. So you can know the support for everything here. Okay. So this is a support here. This is all about the life cycle management of Ansible. So now I think from Red Hat 8 onwards, the support has totally changed. Before Red Hat 7, I think it was six, 11 years, but don't know they have made it 12 years of support. And you can just see this. Installation guide, Windows, Windows guide and network guide, everything is there. You can just click on this network guide will come into a picture. And there is a small guided exercise. As you know that after every chapter, there will be a guided exercise here. The guided exercise is like a scenarios that help you out in just performing step by step. You will get a lot of information, a lot of knowledge. This guided exercise is very important. And you will also have answers for your guided exercises also. And tomorrow we will be starting the second chapter here. If you have any doubts, let me know. Yes, any doubts here? Manoj, David, Satish, Venkat. Yeah. Your voice is too low. Satish, you're talking? Uh, no, I'm not uh -huh. talking, but uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Please tell me. Hello? Yes. yes. Is it audible, sir? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, in Red Hat site, I see uh, uh, a ISO image named Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform. Mm -hmm. So what is it uh, and how it is different? Automation platform is Tava. Uh -huh. It is Tava. Later on, we will see about it. Okay. Okay. That's not a problem. No. So next, any doubts uh, you can ask me. It's very simple only because most of the things we have did a lot of Linux admin concepts only here. Okay, for installing Ansible. Okay, so tomorrow what we will do is we will try to work with inventories, right? So I'll just try to give you, you know, building an Ansible inventory. How do we build inventory? What are the different formats that inventories will support? All these things we are going to discuss tomorrow. Okay. So this is all about uh, one doubt, sir. Mm -hmm. In uh, from control node, um, uh, you executed ad hoc commands like mm -hmm. post name and uh, uptime. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So suppose if uh, anybody executed uh, any service stopping command, mm -hmm. so will that execute? Hundred percent. If that is that happens, so suppose uh, if uh, anybody want to track it, uh, how can we track? It? So who executed what? That is what right inside the engine there is no tracking system. Then it. Oh. Uh, that's the reason we have to go for tower. Why we are going with tower? Because Ansible engine doesn't have any log to track your user, <laughs> right? See, you are authorized to run a playbook. Okay, I can't run your playbook. Why? Because I am not authorized. Okay, getting my point. Your account, your password, you should log in and you only should run it. Because from your account only, I have copied the SSH key to the managed node. It might be same user, it might be different user, nothing to worry because you can't expect same user. Sometimes you need to uh, do, you need to perform some operations with different users also. Remember that. Is this clear? Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is what, see Ansible engine, that is the problem, right? That's the reason I'm telling you um, within one, two years only within this lockdown, Many people, I'm telling you, there are thousands of people they have updated to Ansible. And now people are updating to Tower also because Red Hat strongly recommend their vendors to upgrade from engine to Tower. You're getting it. What are the drawbacks that we are facing using Ansible engine? You should overcome only with the Tower. You're getting it. Many companies I'm seeing, many, many companies are using Tower. Because now automation has become a core concept inside the IT infrastructure, right? Without automation, nothing is happening there. Okay, so automation is very, very important. And people don't want to struggle like uh, to now do, do one thing, we will start with engine tomorrow, we will future, we will go for tower, nothing like that. Once, once for all, they are set up it. It is giving you a total solution okay using this ansible tower all right so these are the benefits here and it is user friendly it is very simple right because it's a web-based ui no one should know vi vim no one should know i mean if some people are there who don't know linux properly still they can work with ansible okay there are so many things we have boss right when you keep on digging into the things, you will be getting so much information, right? So this is a very important thing. So that's it. Then we will meet tomorrow, same time, right? See you. Good day. Good night. Thank you. Right. Bye. Thank you. Bye.